Hello, everybody. I'm back with my first part of my neutral review. Um, it's very bright today. The sun is uh, kind of in my eyes. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I've done all my reviews for the classes, and it's now time to go through the neutral cards. So there's quite a lot of cool stuff. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's dive straight in, man. Let's dive straight in. Starting with Grim Necromancer. 4 mana 2 4. Battle Cry summon 2 1 1 skeletons. So it's somewhat sim similar to Dragonling Mechanic, the uh, 4 mana 2 4 that summons a 2 1. Uh, it's just slightly better than Dragonling Me Mechanic, like you would rather have 2 1 1s than, uh, than a 2 1. So I imagine I imagine this to be better than Dragonling Mecha Dragon Mechanic in, in Arena. Um, in terms of in construct constructed, um, I can't see this being too good. Like the only synergies you, like you can really have with it is you can play the 3-3 three, three Steward of Darkshear, the Paladin card that gives one health minions divine shield. Uh, you can play that on turn three and then play this on turn four, and that's pretty good. Uh, it's also has synergy, with, it'll be good with things like Taran, so it wouldn't be terrible in Paladin. Uh, also in something like Token Druid, where you're playing lots of, uh, lots of uh, buffs, like Mark of the Lotus, Power of the Wild, that type of thing. Uh, but it's, it's not as good as Valid Teacher, and I think you'd rather play Mind Keeper over this as well. Uh, it's obviously slightly more aggressive than Mind Keeper. But um, it is kind of interesting. Like it's a, it's, it's a minion that summons three minions. So it's not that bad. Like It's definitely above average as, as like a neutral card. Um, so I do kind of like this card, even though it's probably not going to be played and constructed. Uh, I, I think it's... It's not that far off because because it's like three minions in one card. It does have really good synergy with like token style decks. So, so yeah. Hmm. I like it actually. Even though it's probably not going to see much constructive play, if any. Snowflipper Penguin, zero mana one one beast. So this is the this is the best zero mana uh, minion we've 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 had so far. Um, obviously. We've had Wisp, we've had uh, the Zero Two Taunt, and we've had Tiny Fin. Beasts have a lot more synergies than uh, a lot of the others. Obviously, Tiny Fin has some Murloc synergies. But Snowfin and Penguin could actually be... I feel like this card could actually be really good in Hunter. Um, Hunter doesn't have very good early game, and so you're often... Against other aggro decks, you're not really getting ahead on the board that much. Whereas Snowflipper Penguin can allow you to use your beast activating cards like um, like Crackling Razor and Houndmaster, like that type of thing, without even having a minion on the board. You just jam your Snowflipper Penguin and then use the the beast energy card with it. Uh, this is also good with the Death Knight, uh, the Hunter Death Knight. So um, because it means your hero power, you'll get you're gonna get. Um, Basically like an overstatted minion. So say you, you pick a beast like a, a rat pack and then you pick it with a snow flipper penguin. The rat pack is still gonna be three mana, but it's gonna be a three three rat pack instead of a two two rat pack. So uh, it, it, it's pretty slightly better for tempo after you've uh, after you've used the, the Death Knight Hunter card. But yeah, I think Snow Flipper Penguin's really good. Like I think you could actually play this in some kind of some kind of beast hunter deck. It's actually really good with um, Stampede as well. Stampede is a, a good a good hunter card in terms of adding more value to that to your hand because hunter obviously has really bad card draw. So so stampede is actually the fact that stampede is only one mana. It's it's really good for adding uh, like more value to hand to your hand and getting more beasts. But hunter decks don't really have like generally you're just playing minions on curve. You don't have lots of cheap minions in hand to use to make the most of stampede. Whereas snowflipper penguin could really help with that because you literally just stampede double snowflipper penguin for one mana. You've already put the, your two one ones on the board and got two more beasts in your hand so this could actually really help stampede maybe see play as well um so yeah i'm a i'm a big fan of snowflake for penguin this is a good card a great card i would say okay sunborn valkyr five and a five four battle cry give adjacent minions plus two health so obviously for for the mana cost if you're giving two minions plus two health this is really nice to play. How consistently are you going to be giving 2 minions plus 2 health though? Mm, hard to say. 
Um, like, if you have two minions on the board, would you prefer to play Nesting Rock? If you're in an, if you're in an aggressive position, uh, you'd rather play this than Nesting Rock. If you're in a kind of an aggro matchup and the taunt could make a massive deal, then I think you'd rather play Nesting Rock than this. Um, but this is a nice card because it's 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 like it's obviously bad if you play it on its own. If you play it on one minion, it's still not really worth it. Um, but if you get on two minions, it's suddenly really good. Would you play this in aggro druid? Probably not. <laughs> like in arena, it, it, this is another one. Of like, a lot of the neutral cards are always like, oh yeah, in arena this could be pretty good. But um, in constructed, not so much. Yeah, there's a few other um, common cards that are kind of similar to this that I think could see some constructive play. Um, but probably not this one. Hmm. It is pretty cool though, because the five mana slot, like since Azurge rate rotated out, um, the five mana slot has been a bit uh, questionable for a lot of classes. So giving... Giving uh, aggressive decks and mid-range decks more options in the 5 mana slot is pretty nice. Nest although to be fair, Nesting Rock is a card that I thought would see more play than it than it does, so I can't imagine this thing playing constructed mainly because of that. But I think Nesting Rock is just slightly better than this. Because ne Nesting Rock is like, it's better to play on its own. If you have nothing on the board, you would much rather play a 4-7 beast than a, a 5-4. Um, so yeah, I think Nesting Rock is better than this. Rattling Rascal. Form on a 2 2. Battle Cry, summon a 5 5 skeleton. Death Rattle, summon one for your opponent. So, a Battle Cry and a Death Rattle. Obviously, when you're playing this, you're instantly getting. It's great for tempo. You're getting 7 7 worth of stats for 4 mana. So, this could just be good in aggressive decks. Just like slamming down uh, slamming down a 5 5 and a 2 2. You don't even care about the, the Death Rattle because you're already in such a good spot that you're just pushing pushing damage and the 5-5 the five five and the 2-2 two two can just help you push so much more damage. damage. Like, it's essentially 7-7 seven seven worth of stats for 4 mana, which is great. And there's another synergy you can use with this card, which is with Warlock. You can play Treachery. Um, so you play your Rattling Rascal, summon your 5-5, five five, and then you Treachery the Rattling Rascal, giving it back to your opponent, and then when you kill it, you get another 5-5. Five five. <laughs> so that kind of thing is pretty good. Like, that's a pretty good synergy. Although it is very uh, clunky, I would say. Um, like, you're giving your opponent the 2-2, two two, and then you have to kill the 2-2 two two just to get the 5-5. Five five. So even though it's good, it is kind of... Mm, a bit awkward, I would say. A bit awkward. But yeah, I would say this is more likely to see play in uh, aggressive decks. This is actually very good with... Uh, this is very good with Evolve, because obviously you you summon the 2-2, two -two, summon the 5-5, five -five, and then Evolve, remove the Death Rattle, and have two good minions to Evolve, so... It's, it's obviously not as good as Doppelgangster, but it is definitely good with Evolve. Like, maybe you would even play some kind of, uh, some kind of Shaman with the Death Knight, and then you'd literally just play Rattling Rascal, and then use Evolve on the... on the, uh, on the Rhino Rascal. That type of thing could be, could be really nice. So, yeah, this card is very interesting, and uh, I think we'll definitely see some play somewhere. Skulking Geist. A 6 mana 4 6. Battle Cry destroy all one cost spells in both hands and decks. So, initially, you see this card, and you're like, oh, rip Jade Idol. <laughs> Like this is one this is a card that could really help stop J Druid. Like J Druid is one of the most popular decks at the moment. Uh, it's very good and it crushes control mostly. But it also, it's also not even bad against aggro with tools like Urban Scales and Primordial Drake and, and sort of things like that. So this card could just Like you might just play this in So I think where you're gonna play this is probably control decks that can't beat J Druid. So you just lose to J Druid unless you have this. Because of their you lose to J Druid because of their infinite Jade Idols. But now you have this card, you don't lose to J Druid. So I think in like heavy slow control decks, like a really slow control priest, um that 
will usually just always just lose to Jay Druid. You can just play this, uh, and it means you can beat Jay Druid. Like, they're still going to have like, a lot of Jades. Like, even even if you're destroying the Jade Idols, they're still going to have, like, the Jade Spirits, the Behemoth, the Aya, the Jade Blossom. So they're still going to be able to get their Jades pretty big, but it's just the fact that they're not infinite, and they're not going to be going up to, like, 2020 or something. Like, eventually, there will be no more Jades, and, and then you can just, you know, win. <laughs> um, so I, I actually... It is a very dodgy card though because there's a lot of other one mana spells that are kind of uh, relevant, like uh, like Miracle Rogue plays lots of one mana spells. Uh, things like Hallucination. Obviously, you've got like the Razor Petals. So, and and the, the one thing is you're also destroying your own one mana spells. So one thing I was thinking was, oh, I could maybe now finally play Mildred because I can. Just the only re like one of the reasons Mildred isn't very good is because you just lose to uh, lose to Jade Druid all the time because you can never fatigue them. Whereas now with Skulking Geist, we can remove the Jade Idol and fatigue them. However, you do destroy your own Naturalizers, and Naturalize is literally the most important card for for Mildred. So, not sure about that. But I'm gonna be trying some Mildred <laughs> for sure. For sure, I'm gonna be trying some Mildred. Um. Yeah, but I think that's the most the most likely situation where this card will see play is in a deck that just can't beat Jade Druid without this card, really. Um, yeah, and I think it's fine. Like, I, I don't think this card is, like, broken or anything because Jade Druid is just... Jade Druid can just go crazy forever. And, like, they can still win games even without their Jade Idols. Like, if, if, you, if you're playing Jade Druid and someone plays your Skulking Geist against you... All it means is you just have to change the strategy a bit. Like, you know that you're not going to be able to win with infinite Jade, so you have to just be really aggressive. And I don't think that's a bad thing, because it means people have to, like, change their play style and you're not playing the same every game. So, yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, Cobalt Scalebane. 5 mana, 5, 5, Dragon. At the end of your turn, give another random friendly minion plus 3 attack. So, Dragons are not that popular at the moment, outside of Priest. Uh, dragon Priest is is fairly good. Um, this is a dragon that you don't really want to play in Dragon Priest. Uh, because this is a dragon you want to play when you're ahead on the board. Not in a control Dragon Priest. And there aren't really many aggressive tools for, for Dragon decks at the moment. Like, Dragon Priest is a very control deck. Like, you play your Dragon Fire Potions, your Primordial Drakes. And lots of removal. Uh, and you're just trying to control the game, really. Whereas this... Like, if you're playing this onto an empty board, you're not making the most of its effect. Its effect is only good um, if you've already got stuff on the board. Its effect is a bit weird, because it's not a battle cry. It's at the end of your turn, so... I don't think its effect is that good. Like, it feels like this would be more suited to something like when, when Dragon Warrior was a popular deck, and that was like an aggressive dragon deck. It feels like this would be better suited to something like that. Uh, maybe instead of like a Zerg Drake or something. But um But yeah, in control dragon decks, I don't think you're gonna play this. Like it is a dragon. It does like the fact that it has the dragon uh tag is is a pretty big deal because it means it activates operative, it activates Nether Spire Story and that kind of thing. But I don't think it's it's quite good enough to uh to see any competitive play. In constructed in, in standard, I mean, anyway. Happy Ghoul. 3 mana 3 3, three costs 0 if your hero was healed this turn. This is, I think, one of the best cards in the set. This card is uh, really insane for tempo. Getting a 0 mana 3 3 is very good. And um, I think the places you're most likely to see uh, Happy Ghoul is probably in Priest, where obviously you have your hero power, which heals you. You have things like Spirit Lash, which shields you, um, New Acolyte of Agony. But uh, it's very easy for priests to hear it heal their hero. They even have things like uh, Binding Heal, uh, which heals your hero. And so it's going to be pretty easy a lot of the time to get a, a zero mana 3-3 three, three out on the board, uh, which is pretty insane. And it's also going to be good in Paladin. Paladin has like True Silver Champion. You've got new cards like Chillblade Champion. You've got like Ragnaros Lightlord. 
Paladin is another class that has a lot of ways of healing, healing your own hero. And so, yeah, I, I'm actually really pretty... I'm expecting to see Happy Ghoul a lot. Like, maybe even you play it in, like, some kind of Warlock deck where you're playing uh, Drain Soul and uh, and the, uh, the the hero card and then maybe even, like, some other healing things like Siphon Soul and Farseer and that type of thing. So, I'm expecting to see Happy Ghoul, Ghoul a fair amount. Yeah, this card is strong. This card is strong. And I like it too, because it's a good tempo card, but it's not something you're going to be playing in Pirate Wire, or Agro Druid, or Token Shaman. <laughs> so it's a good tempo card for more mid rangey decks, which, uh, which I'm happy about. I like this. It's a great card. Okay, Nerubian Unraveler, 6 mana, 5, 5, epic. Spells cost 2 more. So people were uh, kind of saying this is similar to Lotheb, which is it is in a way obviously making spells cost two more is a big deal. Six mana five five. The stats are obviously slightly underwhelming, uh, but the effect is good. S deny making spells cost two more can deny so many things. You can deny uh, combos, things like freeze mage from doing a load of burn to you. You can stop people clearing your board. It's very good against things like Miracle Rogue, who relies on a load of cheap spells. So this card is pretty pretty cool. But the issue is, like, what deck are you actually going to play this in, is, is my problem. Um, the fact that its stats are underwhelming are, is kind of okay, though. Because a 6 mana 5-5 five, five is obviously vulnerable to things like Violence Portal and stuff like that. But the fact that spells cost 2 more make a 6 mana 5-5... Five, five a lot harder to remove. Like, you're not going to be able to Violence Portal it, um, etc. So, this card is pretty good. I just can't work out what deck you're actually going to play it in. <laughs> like, what are you even going to play? Are you going to want to play this in the aggro decks to stop your opponent? Like, you've turn one to five, you've built up a board, and then turn six, you, like, stop them clearing your board, potentially? Um... Uh... Because it's your own spells as well. So you are going to want to be playing this in a minion heavy deck. That's the thing. You could maybe play it in like Kazakas type decks as a one of to deny like combos and stuff like that. It's really nice because it's, it's like a reactive tool. Like it, in certain matters is going to be better than other matters. In a matter where there's loads of minions everywhere. Which is kind of what we have at the moment. Like at the moment there's a lot of minion heavy decks. Like Merlock Paladin, Token Shaman, Agri Druid. Um... This isn't going to be very good against that type of thing. Uh, this is going to be better when there's a lot of decks like like Miracle Rogue and like Freeze Mage and, and that type of deck. In a, in a spell heavy meta, this becomes better. So I think this is also one of those cards that also depends on the meta. If there are a lot of spell decks, maybe you put you can put this in a, in a, a few decks. But if there aren't many spell decks, you, you, you're just not going to play this. Bone Drake. 6 mana 6 5 dragon, death rattle, and random dragon to your hand. I really like this card. Uh, it's a value death rattle that also has some chunky stats. Uh, maybe you could play this in like Nazoth Priest. I was thinking maybe some kind of like dragon Nazoth Priest. Um, I think this is a good card. It's obviously like fairly slow, but it's good value. And if you're playing a class like Priest where you have the option to get like operative as well, I mean, most dragons are going to be big. So normally what you're going to be getting from this is going to be some big meaty dragon that's just good value um, so I like this in Priest a lot it might even be the case that you play this even not in dragons like if you even just like Nazoth Priest you might just play this even without dragons probably not though because Primordial Drake is so good you want to just throw the Primordial Drakes in and then the dragon fires and then the operatives come with it so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to some kind of dragon dragon Nazoth Priest um, I mean, Dragon Nazoth Mage. People have been talking about a little bit because of um, Sindragosa. But I don't think that's going to become a thing. Um, I definitely don't think that's going to become a thing. Yeah, I think it's much more likely to see playing Priest. Any other any other Death Rattle decks? I mean, it is a good card. Like, you can even play, if you're playing a Nazoth deck and you don't quite have enough Death Rattle cards, you could just play this. <laughs> you can literally just play this. It's it's a it's a it's a good minion. It's a good minion. Bone Mare, 
7 mana 5-5, five, five. Battlecry, give a friendly minion plus 4 plus 4, and taunt. Now, this card actually seems kind of insane to me. It's... It actually it just seems like ridiculously good. <laughs> like for a neutral common minion, giving a friendly minion plus four plus four and taunt. So you're also being defensive. Like maybe you even want to play this in things like Hunter. Um, like things like Midrange Hunter. Use this on Meat Wagon, seems good. <laughs> you could play this, like any like minion heavy deck. You could. You could just play this in. Like any mid rangey minion heavy deck. You just you just throw this in, man. This card seems very good to me. Then you're essentially getting nine nine worth of stats for seven mana. Plus you're getting something torn. And the plus four plus four is gonna have charge if you have a min actually have a minion on the board when you're playing this. Yeah, this card's really good. God is really good. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. Like, <laughs> this card's just great. This card's just great. <laughs> in arena, also, it's gonna be bust. It's gonna be like the most busted card ever in arena. Yeah. So if you get the option of picking this in arena, pick it. Okay, Tuscar Fisherman, two mana, two three. Battle cry, give a friendly minion spell damage plus one. So, we already have our neutral 2-2 uh, spell damage minion, Cobalt Geomancer. And this is obviously better stats, but you have to actually have a minion on the board uh, to use this. The downside of this is that it's, it's worse on turn 2 than the, the spell damage minion. Um, well, if you're using it with a spell, because you can't actually, you're not actually getting the spell damage. I mean, you'd rather play a 2-3 on turn 2 than a 2-2. But if you're doing like something like uh, playing it with a backstab, you'd much rather play the Cabal Geomancer because you're actually getting the spell damage. Whereas this, you actually have to have another minion on the board to get the spell damage. Like I'm thinking, they have revealed quite a few spell damage minions. And I'm kind of thinking maybe some kind of spell damage heavy rogue could be pretty interesting. Um, yeah, and I mean, another benefit of this is that you can use, give the spell damage to a minion that has a lot of health. Obviously, Cobalt Geomancer only has two health, so it can just die. If you're giving this, using this on something with five or six health, uh, it's going to be a lot harder for them to remove the spell damage and kill it. So, I like this minion. I like this minion quite a lot, actually. You are going to have to be playing enough... Like, it, it is hard, though, because in, in, in a spell damage deck, you want to be playing a lot of spells to interact with the spell damage. But, for this card to work, you also need to be playing a, a fair amount of minions to actually use this on minions. So, I don't know what kind of deck this would actually fit into. <laughs> but, uh, it's, a, it's a nice card. Makes you think. Makes you think. Which is always good. Like, cards that, like... The best type of cards, I feel, when they release an expansion are the cards that are clearly fairly good, but you're not instantly like, oh, this goes in this deck, this goes in th that deck. Like, that's that's bad. And ca cards are better when they, they're, they're like this, where they're, they're cl you're clearly getting a pretty good thing for the amount of money you're playing, but you don't really know where it would fit in. Um, and that really makes deck building interesting. So yeah, I like this card a lot. Shallow Grave Digger, 3 mana 3 1, Death Rattle, a random Death Rattle minion to your hand. So this is very slow. A 3 mana 3 1 is going to die to patches very easily, and uh, a lot of other things that do 1 damage. Mage Ping, etc, etc. It is good value though, um, like in terms of... So say take something like the Priest Quest. This is essentially giving you two things towards the Priest Quest in one card. So I think if this was... I don't think this will see any play, but I think if you were playing some kind of quest priest, you you would you would consider this card. Yeah, like if you're playing something like a, a Kazakus quest priest, I think you you'd play this. Because a lot of the time in, in in quest priest, it's it's all about just getting Amara as fast as you can, and so this is going to help you get Amara pretty fast. But it's it's got such terrible stats that <laughs> that I can't see it being played in anything other than other than Quest Priest. 
And even in Quest Priest, it's still a bit. Uh. <laughs> Grave Shambler, 4 for the 4 4 elemental. Whenever your weapon is destroyed, in plus 1 plus 1. So I've been playing a lot of Elemental Rogue recently, and I was thinking, would this fit into Elemental Rogue? It could do, because obviously you have d Dagger in Rogue, and so you, it's pretty easy to just Dagger on turn 2 and then attack on turn 3, and then on turn 4, play Grave Shambler and just get your weapon destroyed, and then this is a 4 and a 5-5 five, five Elemental, which is, is nice. You can also play this in Warrior. I think Rogue would be the most likely place to see this, though. But, like, is this better than Fire Bloom Phoenix and Tall Bay Stone Shaper? Oh, uh, it's, it's pretty hard to say, to be honest. Well, the, I mean, the nicest thing about it is that it's four mana. And so, a lot of the time, you have something like Tall Bay Stone Shaper, which you want to play on turn four, but then it doesn't activate your Servant of Calamos on turn five. Whereas this is an elemental. And so it does activate your Servant of Calamos on turn 5. So I would definitely consider playing this in, in, te in Tempo Elemental Rogue. Um, any kind of uh, Elemental Warrior? I mean, I guess the question is, does it even need to be in, in an Elemental deck? Could you literally just play a deck that plays loads of weapons and then play this? Maybe. For it's, it's going to be a, like you want to try and make it four and a five five with the potential to be bigger. Yeah, definitely going to try this in elemental rogue. I can't see it being played in warrior. Furnace fire colossus, six mana six six. Discard all weapons from your hand and gain them. Gain their stats. This is a really crazy card. This is a really crazy card. Because obviously if you have a lot of weapons in your hand, you could get this. This could be huge. This could be huge. You have like Gore Howl and like Fiery War Axes and stuff. You can easily get this to like an insane amount of attack. But what deck are you going to be playing where you're playing that many weapons and you're happy discarding them? Um, I'm really not sure. And the fact, that it, the fact it's discarding and giving you big tempo and great stats means you're probably going to be one of playing this in an aggressive deck. And... You're not going to want to play this in Pirate Warrior because you want to be smacking your opponent in the face with your weapons. I guess I guess one situation where this could be good in a... Like, say Pirate Warrior, for example. Um, like, a lot of the time you say, equip your Arcanite Reaper on turn 5. And then you have a couple of a weapon or two in your hand that you can't play because your Arcanite Reaper is equipped. and this, So this can just discard them and give you... Keep the tempo going. But... But you'd much rather just play Beer Tide Hydra, so. Hmm. I mean, maybe some kind of deck where you're um, you're playing. Let's go, let's go to Warrior. Some kind of crazy deck where you're playing a uh, Dead Man's Hand, and so you're constantly shuffling a copy of your hand into your deck, and then you're playing a bunch of weapons, and so you you use your Dead Man's Hand first. Copy all your weapons, and then pl play your, uh, what the hell is it? And then play your Furnace Fire Colossus, and discard all the weapons, and then, uh, and then get a massive minion, and then it doesn't matter, because the rest of your deck is cards, or he's going to draw into the rest of your weapons anyway. But probably not. Um, probably not. <laughs> Some kind of tempo warrior. Tempo Warrior? Tempo Warrior might even be the best place for this. Like a weapon heavy Tempo Warrior. Because you can get this pretty nice. Like, I do think this card is good. Because you just it's, it's just a way of getting really good tempo. But it's just you have to be playing enough weapons for it to be worth playing. That's the one that's the one downside. And discarding something like Blood Razor isn't even that good because it's only got 2-2 two, two stats. So you want to be discarding a weapon with with higher stats than a blood razor, something like a gore howl or maybe fool's bane or something like that. Uh, yeah, crazy card. Fallen Sun Cloak, two hundred two one. Battle cry, give a friendly minion plus one plus one. This makes me wish the dragon egg was still in standard because this card would be so good at dragon with dragon egg, so good with dragon egg. Um, Obviously, we have Shattered Sun Cloak, the 3-mana three 3-2 three that gives a friendly minion plus 1 plus 1. 
Um, I think this is this is slightly better than Shard Sun Cleric. So I think this is more likely to see play than that. Uh, what deck are you gonna play this in there? It's good with a uh, it's good with a fair amount of one drops. Like if you play like a one three on turn one, say like a Void Walker, then this is pretty nice to use on it. I think this minion is good. I think this minion is good. You use it on Runic Age, you use it on like Argent Squire. Uh, the new two mana 1 1 Divine Shield Taunt that I can't even remember what it's called. Let me find out what it's called. What the hell is that minion called? Righteous Protector. Good. That card is gonna. This card, this card is good. I can guarantee you, yeah. This card is very good. So yeah, this is nice. This is nice. Like, I, you're not gonna play this in like Pirate Warrior, but maybe some minion, minion, uh, minion heavy decks that don't have many good things in the two slot. Like Zoo doesn't have many good two mana minions. So maybe you're playing like a one drop on turn one and then playing this on turn two. I could see that being good. So like Warlock Zoo is a place I can see this working for sure. Um, Yeah, maybe some kind of Paladin with lots of cheap minions. Like, you compare it to, like, Rockpool Hunter. It's very similar to Rockpool Hunter, but Rockpool Hunter, you have to have a... a uh, Murloc on the board, whereas this, you can have anything on the board, but it has two le less health than Rockpool Hunter. It's a nice card. It's a nice card. Corpse Razor. 5 mana 3-3. Three, three. Battle cry, give a friendly minion, death rattle, resummon this minion. This card is kind of weird because there's going to be a lot of situations where you can actually get insane tempo out of this. Now, even if you use this on something like, uh, uh, say you play like Fandral and then use this on Fandral on turn five, that's really good. Uh, like if you, a lot, there's a lot of four mana minions that you can play before this where this becomes good. So I think this is one that's easy to overlook and think, oh, it's a 5 mana 3-3, three, three. It's, it's not that good. But if you're ahead on the board, this can give you fantastic tempo. I, the problem is I don't know what deck you're actually going to play it in. Um. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the same with a lot of these cards. They're like, their effect is good, but I don't know what deck I'm going to play it in. That, like, I have that with a lot. You could maybe even play this in like Tempo Warrior. You play like Bloodhoof Brave on turn four. And then this is basically going to be a 3-3 that is going to give you another Bloodhoof Brave when the Bloodhoof Brave dies. Like that type of thing. Um, I think this is one of the most underrated cards of the set so far. I think this card's good. Mm. Tomb Lurker, 5-5-3. Battlecry, add a random death rattle minion that died at this game to your hand. So, uh, a 5 mana 5 3 is obviously very slow. Um, I feel like this card is going to be better in decks that don't have many death rattles, but the death rattle minions are very impactful. So, in, say, Nazoth Priest, you're going to be playing a lot of cheap death rattle minions, like Crystalline Oracle, for example. Um, whereas Nazoth Palvin, you you have very few death roll minions right now. They play uh, Tyrion and Cairn, and that's literally all Nazoth Palvin plays at the moment. So adding another Tyrion or Cairn, a 5 and a 5-3 that gives you another ty Tyrion or Cairn is very good value. So, this can have good value, but it does seem too slow to me. Um, yeah, it does seem too slow to me. Like in a, say, Quest Priest, for example, I think you would rather play the Shallow Grave Digger, which is a death rattle itself, and adds a death rattle to your hand, over, over this. Yeah. But in something like Nazoth Pile, then, you would probably rather play this. Not that you would play this, though. And I don't even think you would play this in Nazoth Pile, then. Hmm. <laughs> Skellimancer, 5 mana 2 2, Death Rattle. If it's your opponent's turn, summon an 8 8 skeleton. What a crazy card. 
Like, there's, they have a lot of these cards that, if it's your, like, Death Rattles that are, are really bad if they tr your opponent triggers them on their turn. So it's just very good against AoE. Like, if your opponent, if your opponent, like, kills this, say you're building a board, and then you play this, and then your opponent kills it, and then you get an 8-8. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, it is only a 5-mana 2-2, two -two, though. And a 5-mana 2-2 two -two is pretty easy to just ignore. You're pretty happy ignoring a 5 mana 2 2. It's obviously very good with something like Spy Rich Steve because suddenly you're giving it taunt and making it more threatening and making them want to kill it. And then you're going to get a 2 6 and an 8 8. Uh, a 2 6 taunt and an 8 8 when, when this dies. But I. I think it's kind of too situational. Like, it is very good with Spy Rich Steve, it's good with other buffs. But. Like, when you buff a minion, it, it makes it more likely... Well, it makes it more threatening, and it makes your opponent more likely to want to kill it. So, these type of cards that, that trigger on your... That give, have a good death relic to trigger on your opponent's turn, I think are, are, are going to be potentially good in, in buff decks. Like, maybe you even play, like, a buff pal, and you play this card in it, just because you're going to keep buffing it and make your opponent want to kill it. However, if you buff a minion like this, it makes it even more vulnerable to cards like Devolve and Silence and Hex and that type of thing. Um, you get even more punished than... Like, if you play this and then Spike with Steed and the opponent devolves, it's just devastating. <laughs> devastating! Interesting. I don't know where I'm gonna play where I would play this though. The most important thing about it is the fact that it protects you from AoE, I feel. And if there's a lot of AoE in the map, like if control warlock becomes a thing and it's like defile and hellfire back in the in the game and fairly popular, then maybe that's the situation where this does become does become actually playable. Ticking Abomination. <laughs> well, Ticking Abomination. This is the first card to be revealed. Obviously, OP. This card is obviously absolutely insane, Kappa. A 4 and a 5, 6. Death Rattle deal 5 damage to your minions. So, another card that you could potentially use with... Where is it? Treachery. Choose a friendly minion and give it to your opponent. You can give your opponent your Ticking Abomination and then kill it somehow. And it does five damage to their board, which is pretty big. Um, I can't. I think it's too clunky for that to actually happen, though, or be a, a common thing. So um, I think it'd be more likely to see play in something like maybe even like an aggro deck, where it's an aggro deck where you're you're not worried about your board. So something like Face Hunter, where Face Hunter generally doesn't have like they have a good one turn one two three but after that they kind of give up the board and just start going face with bows and kill commands and hero power um whereas this if you don't care about your board a formula five six is a nice minion um to be fair you would rather play bitter type hydra than this i think so even in that senate syrup scenario it's, it's probably still not good enough yeah what a meme man <laughs> what a meme what a mean. Okay, I will uh, finish the first part of my uh, my neutral card review there, but uh, we will come on to the next one shortly. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Can't wait for the new expansion. <laughs>